Thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is Modern Agro Solutions Limited. I'm with my partner Ahmed, and uh, our other partner is Abdi Kadir. We are uh, we are a further research and development company. What we do is uh, we uh, we grow different types of fodders. Different types of fodders are suitable for different types of region, and we also offer consultancy services on uh, 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 growing of fodders, their management, conservation, and uh, feeding of animals. We are currently at one of our demo farms. Uh, in Kiambu County. Kiambu County is uh, one of the 47 counties in, in uh, Kenya. And uh, we are... Uh, near Nairobi, eh? Near, yeah, it's yeah. actually the neighbor Nairobi. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the demo sites where we have planted super nepia together with the uh, tricantera. And uh, we will be introducing you to more fodder crops uh, with, with time. Um, our project that we are the project that we are currently undertaking is uh, we are doing a hundred hectares uh, of uh, fodder in uh, Burao, Burao that is in Somaliland, um, for purposes of uh, feeding to our camels, feeding to our goats, and for uh, for uh, for purposes of uh, uh, giving it out to other farmers in the region. And uh, that's a project that we've already started. It's an ongoing. We will be keeping you updated with the progress. And you can always reach us, Modern Agro Solutions uh, Limited. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Thank Mr. You, Simon, thank you, we'll thank you. Share mm. uh, about company Modern Agro Solutions. Good uh, morning. So we are at uh, Modern Agro Solutions ATC at one of our demo farms. And uh, so here we have planted super nepia using the Tumbukiza method. Tumbukiza method is you dig a hole measuring two feet long, two feet wide, and two feet deep. And then in each of the holes, you plant one cutting of uh, super nepia. One cutting, of course, you plant it at a slanting angle. When you're planting, it's uh, recommended that you use or you apply at least one bucket of manure in each hole and an equal amount of soil. So it is, uh, you do a hole measuring two feet long, two feet wide, and two feet deep. And then you apply one bucket, the 20 kg bucket of manure, and one bucket of top topsoil. Then you mix it up very well. You mix it up thoroughly. And then after you've mixed it up thoroughly, you plant each cutting. So the nephew, uh you see one, this uh, hole here. So this is one of the Tumbukiza holes that we, uh, we have done. And uh, so this grass is uh, exactly one and a half months old. One and a half months old. And you can see it is, uh, it is uh, taller than you. It is taller than me. Yeah? <laughs> it is actually almost two meters tall. Two meters tall. Two meters. Uh, should have harvested at exactly one month. One month. Exactly. Yeah. Days. Okay. And uh, the most exciting thing is you can see the number of shoots in each hole. So this is, this is our fifth uh, harvesting. Fifth harvest. Yeah, fifth harvest from this specific hole. Mm -hmm. And you can see it is already filled up. Imagine. It's already filled up with yeah. an average of almost a hundred shoots. Yeah. A hundred tillers from yeah. each Tumbukiza hole. Yeah. And you can see some of them are still growing. In as much as we have ready mature nepia grass for harvesting, you can see some tillers are still coming up. Coming up, yeah. These ones. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you see, like this one, it's also coming up. Meaning you you I mean once you cut this grass now it will give us very many shoots. Okay. What we say is if you have super nepia planted in an acre of land. Yeah. One acre. Yeah. You have as close to two hundred tons. What about in a hectare? In a hectare that's a one hectare that is four hundred and eighty to, to five hundred tons. Oh wow. in a year. Because in a year you plant you harvest you see, once you plant it now, it will take two and a half months to three months okay. for you to harvest, the first harvest. Thing, okay. Yeah? And then thereafter, after every one month, to 30 to 45 days, it's okay. ready for harvesting. Meaning you have an average now we of can see seven, has... seven harvestings in yeah. a year. Yeah. A total of which now will give us 200 yeah. tons. Ah. And now we have seen it has been, it got ready at just one month. Imagine. At one month, exactly one so the rains here That's, have been good, so yeah. we got rains uh, when we cut it, and at exactly one month we should have harvested. But this one we are leaving it a bit uh, to grow, yeah. because we want to see um, what happens to the grass once it grows really, really tall. Really yes, tall. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. What about those who irrigate it? So now, and the, in the, those who are in tropical regions, hot areas? If, if you are in a tropical area or an area that has a lot of warmth, yeah. 
if the Napier grass will be doing exceptionally well. Yeah. So, in fact, if you have water yeah. and you are in a hot area, mm -hmm. area that has a lot of uh, uh, warmth, warmth, the sunlight, yeah. Yeah. sunlight, in, like in our tropical areas in, yeah. Kenya, in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, yeah. Somalia, you yeah. know. Um, or in a coastal region, yeah. then I guarantee you, after you've done the first harvesting, after every 30 days, that Napier grass will be ready for harvest. So they can get even more than 500 tons. In so fact, <laughs> they can even get more than 500 tons that we are Imagine. talking about. Yes. So 500 tons in, an, in one hectare, that's a conservative number. Yeah. It can actually double, be more than uh, that. There is, yeah. You said there is a farmer in the coastal region who said yeah. we got almost uh, a thousand tons. A yes. thousand so tons. one of our farm, farmer fields that we are doing experiments on is based in Malindi. Uh -huh. um, it's a big dairy farm. So what they do is their soils are rich in organic matter mm -hmm. and uh, they are also irrigating the grass. Okay. So in a unit area that they've planted, they are estimating they will be getting over a thousand tons, tons from imagine. one hectare. One hectare? Yes, imagine. Yes, yes, because of the warm. The area is, is so warm. very warm. Yeah, um, yeah. They do irrigation. They do irrigation. Okay. So uh, but she has been applying, uh, you know, nitrogen to the soil in terms of urea, urea. and uh, and also slurry from the cow, from okay. the cow, uh, okay. from yeah. the bio, bio, bio grass. Okay. So, so another thing is you can use manure when you're planting and then occasionally top dress with top CAN dress, okay. or uh, top dressing fertilizers. Um, because you see manure also improves soil structure and it helps the nipia grass to the soil to aerate so that then the roots can go further down okay. meaning if you have manure and occasionally you do top dressing yeah. with the nitrogen fertilizers then your napier grass will do very well so now this one uh this one we uh you know after we cut it now it will continue to grow for up to seven years seven to eight years seven to eight years seven imagine. to eight years yes. okay it's a perennial yeah. crop. Yeah. what are the other advantage of this grass over the other grasses very good. So yeah. we have already mentioned about yield, eh? yeah. how much you get from yeah. a unit area. There that is no any other good. grass that you can get. That there yield. is no any other grass that you can get uh, close to 200 tons in yeah. one acre, or 408 to 500 tons in yeah. a hectare. Yeah. The ones that come closer to that has uh, almost uh, around 210 uh, tons yeah. per hectare. That is a bracaria. Uh -huh. uh, but this one will do very, very well. Mm. And then the other beauty with this one is uh, it's a cross of napier grass and palm millet. Okay. So it's crossed. So napier grass and palm millet. And yeah. palm millet. Yeah. So the crossing makes it to have very high crude protein. Uh -huh. In fact, this one, if you now have a it at exactly one month at a height of between uh, 1.2 to 1.5 meters, uh -huh. it should have uh, given you 16 to 18 percent crude protein. That is very good for dairy. Mm -hmm. I mean, for milk production. In okay. fact, you, if you give your cows. So, uh, super camels, nepia, camels uh, goats, goats yeah. you expect an increase in milk production. What about to those for fattening? So the energy content is very good at 9 okay. megajoules per kilo. Okay. That compares very well with uh, other forages like okay. maize okay. or uh, sorghum that yeah. have very high sugar content. Uh -huh. Meaning it, it can complement very well for beef or for the ones that are kept, goats that are or even camels that are kept for slaughter. Okay. It will do very, very well. Oh, okay. Additionally, um, you know, the main challenge with fodders has been conservation. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you get to plant very good fodders, but because of, uh, uh, because of uh, you know, rainfall is, uh, is erratic sometimes. <laughs> so you don't have the napier grass growing all the time. The good thing with super napier is you can con easily convert it into silage. You oh. can make it into silage <laughs> and store it for... When the rains is. are not there, yeah. or for shipments, supposing you want to transport, you are exporting animals. Oh, you sorry. want to you want to transport from location A to location B. You can bail it, and then uh, not not bailing per se. You can uh, yeah. You, yeah you can yeah, ensile it, it yeah. ensile it, wrap it, yeah. and then transport it. Okay. And we have we have uh, someone doing that, yeah. and we sh sh uh, we will soon be be, uh, be able to do that. Okay, well. okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then another thing Ahmed with this grass is. Um, I think the vigorous growth, eh? the vigorous yeah. growth is very good because you need a lot of fodder for your animals. So yeah. you're not worried because after every month, once if you will be able to harvest it. And if your animals will not be able to feed on all of it, you can conserve it into fodder. Okay. And then uh, the crude protein content we've mentioned about, the yield. 
and yeah. then uh, of course the conversion, conversion. Of, of the super <coughs> into super silage. Yeah. And lastly, this grass, eh, it, it doesn't have the pretty hairs of super mm -hmm. The hairiness that uh, that Makes, are very uh, allergic. Uh, yeah, that causes allergy. Uh -huh. So meaning you can, it's very easy to work on it. Yeah, yeah? you just cut it and carry it if you're feeding direct, directly to your animals. Okay. I think that those are the key, the key. Okay, thank you, Mr. Simon. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Ahmed. Yeah, thank you.